The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Later on in tonight's program, it will be our pleasure to present Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, Director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, speaking to you from Washington, D.C. Are you covered by Social Security? Then would it surprise you to know that your rights under Social Security can be equivalent to $12,000, $15,000, even $18,000, depending on your age, salary, and family situation? Rights worth that much are worth knowing about, worth safeguarding. Therefore, as a public service, the Equitable Life Assurance Society will devote this program's entire middle commercial due in just 14 minutes to information on Social Security. Information which may mean money in your pocket. Tonight's FBI file, The Runaway Racketeers. There are many serious problems facing every law enforcement agency today. But perhaps the most important one is juvenile delinquency. Because unless that problem is at least partially solved, there is no hope that the crime wave will recede. If the juvenile delinquency problem is attacked intelligently, then the constant flow of recruits to the army of criminals will be impeded. And then progress can be made in stifling the activities of our adult criminals. Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, will speak to you later in the program about this matter of vital concern to every one of you, whether you are a parent or not. It has been a mistake made by many people in the past that juvenile delinquency was no concern of theirs if they themselves did not have children whose lives they might guide. Nothing could be further from the truth. The problem that confronts your FBI and every other law enforcement agency in the nation also concerns you. Tonight's file opens late one afternoon on the edge of a river which flows through a large eastern city. A boy is walking along a dock that juts into the stream. He nears a group of youngsters who are swimming below. Hey, Vinny! Hey, swim over the ladder, will you? Ah, come on up. I want to talk to you. What do you want? Well, I ain't going to yell down there. Come on up. Okay. What's in your mind, Rico? Hey, come on over here. Okay. Hey, throw me Eddie's shirt, will you? I want to wipe off. Okay. You got another butt? Mm, sure. Here. Here. Where'd you get a full pack? I bought it. And that ain't all I can buy. With what? With this. Hey, how much you got there? Twenty-five bucks, and it's mine. Where'd you get it? Yeah, me and Charlie did a job. What'd you do, roll a drunk? Nah. A little stick-up? I figured out something that's better than a stick-up. Now I can't work it no more. Why not? Eh, yeah, Charlie got sick. What's the matter with him? I don't know. He's in a hospital. That's what I want to talk to you. Why? I want to work the same thing over again. I need another guy. You want to work with me? Yeah. What kind of a job is it? First you tell me if you're in or not, huh? Do I get that kind of dough? Mm, maybe more. Charlie gonna be sore at me? I told you, it's my idea. I'll take care of it, Charlie. Okay, I'm in. Swell. Get your clothes and let's get back to the club. Right now? Yeah. We gotta find a doctor to call. What's the matter? You sick too? No, I ain't sick. That's part of the job. The first thing we gotta do is call a doctor. <laughs> Here by now, he'll show. 
Is this the place you and Charlie used? Nah, you think I'm that stupid? Oh, I was just asking. You sure you gave the doctor the right address? It's just like you told me. Okay, okay. Now look, when he rings the bell, you answer the door and look real sad. Okay. Let him in and remember, open the door real wide so we don't see me standing behind. I will. And I'll take care of the rest. Hope it works. It worked the other day with Charlie and me, didn't it? Yeah. Then I'm... quit worrying as long as... That's him now. Go ahead. Okay. Dr. Fulton? That's right, son. My mother's in that room there. Thank you. Okay, Vinny, let's roll him and get out of here. Next morning in the gymnasium of the local boys' club, FBI Special Agent Jim Taylor is visiting an old friend. All right, now, let's watch your man there. Play heads up, Paul, Red. You watch your man. Oh, mouth. Paul. What? Hey, Paul. Oh, hi there, Jim. Uh, right with you. Okay. Go ahead, keep grabbing him, boy. Well, Jim, what are you doing in this neighborhood? Working. Uh-oh. Hope none of my boys are in trouble with the FBI. I hope not by this, though, Paul. That's what I came here to check on, though. Oh, Yes, a doctor named Fulton paid a professional call to a flat around the corner last night and was knocked out by two youngsters. Yes? They robbed him after they knocked him out. Oh, Jim, I'm certain none of my boys would do a thing like that. Well, Paul, maybe you can help me find the two who did, huh? How much do you know so far? Well, early this morning, Dr. Fulton's wife called the police. I see. She said the doctor hadn't been home all night. His nurse reported that he'd made his last call last evening at an address in this neighborhood. The police checked and found him there. He wasn't dead, was he? No, but he'd received a very nasty skull wound. Uh -oh. He regained consciousness for a few minutes and told the police he'd been assaulted by two youngsters. Then he passed out again. Well, how does the FBI get into the case, Jim? Well, after the doctor was robbed, the youngsters took his car up to Playland Park. One of the tires went flat, so they abandoned it. Well, Playland Park, as you know, is just across the state line. Yes, I know. Well, what can I do to help, Jim? When Dr. Fulton comes to at the hospital, I'm going to get a full description of the boys, Paul. Then, if they're from this neighborhood, maybe you can tell me who they are. I'll certainly try. Fine. I'm going back up to the hospital now. I'll see you later. Three to two, no nine. Who's with me, huh? Three to two, no nine. Come on, who's on a bed? Let's go. Let's go. Rico. Rick. Huh? Oh, hiya, Benny. You in the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I see you for just a minute? Well, what about? Well, the rest of the stuff from last night's job. Did you sell it? Nah, not all of it. Why not? You look stupid. This is no place to talk business. But I thought you said Come on over here. Come on. I sold everything except this ring and a wristwatch. Can you get nothing for him? I'm keeping the watch. You get the ring. Oh, let's have it, huh? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Hey, it's got my initial on it. Hey, look, Vinny, I got to get back to the game, okay? Hey, wait, I forgot to tell you something. Well? I seen Pete Paxton today. He said hello to me. So what? Well, I guess the big guy's got the word how we've been operating. Maybe Pete could use us, huh? Look, if we keep going like this, Pete will be working for us. <laughs> Some joke. Yeah, I mean it. Why don't we do another job, Rick? Come on, I... On who? I don't know yet. The phone book is full of doctors. Are you busy, Paul? Oh, come on in, Jim. Pull up a chair. Oh, thanks. I'm trying to lay out the strongest possible batting order for a game we're playing tomorrow. No? Need a good left-handed second baseman? <laughs> Need a whole infield. No. Oh, by the way, did you talk to the doctor? Yes. Yes, he couldn't give us much of a description on either one of the boys, but he guessed them to be around 16 years old. I see. However, he did give me a list of possessions which were taken from him and a description of each article. Here, Paul, take a look at this. Right. That list also contains the things that were stolen from another doctor who was assaulted last week. By the same boy? Well, we don't know that yet. Well, I guess the doctor couldn't give much of a description either. No. No, he couldn't. But because both assaults took place in this neighborhood, I was hoping maybe you'd spot some of the things on some of the boys who come in here. Well, Jim, we're, we're not getting many boys here these days. Kids want stuff to play with when they come here, and they've learned that we just don't have it. We got one pair of boxing gloves, for instance. What? Yes, and the baseball season is getting started, and we got one bat, two old baseballs, and both of them taped up. 
Well, I don't understand, Paul. How come you haven't got more equipment than that? Well, it takes money, Jim, and people aren't contributing it. They'll spend $50,000 to build a statue of a man on a horse, but they won't spend a dime for a kid on a sidewalk. Now, where do the kids go if they don't come here? Well, this time of the year, they go swimming off the docks down by the river. Mm. A couple of them get drowned every season, but they are poor kids, so no one cares except their families. That's about it. Paul, what can be done? A place like this ought to be a big help in fighting delinquency. Well, it can't be, Jim, unless we get kids to come in. If we had some equipment and a swimming pool, why, why I could break up half the gangs in the neighborhood. Are there many of them? Dozens. Mm. And every one of them has rented a cellar. Running their own clubs, you can imagine what they are. Mm, yeah. But I'm still trying, Jim. In fact, I'm going out this afternoon to make the rounds of the cellar clubs and talk to every boy I find and see if I can't get them to come here. Well, Paul, if you spot any of the items on that list I gave you, let me know. Chalk, Rico. Okay. Uh, let's see. Seven ball cross side. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't leave myself in no good position. Uh, let's see what I can do now. Hey, I forgot to tell you, I picked out a doctor for tonight. Who is he? A uh, guy over on Walton Avenue. Oh. Think I can make that combo? Hmm? Let's try it and see. Well, I wonder if... See who that is. Okay. Hello, Vinny. Oh, hello. Well, can I come in? Well, okay. Hello, Rocco. Hi. I came to see if I could get you boys to come over to the club and play on our ball team. That's for kids. Well, we're playing a team from the North End tomorrow, and we sure could use you. How much a man are you playing for? We don't play for money. Mm, we ain't interested. Hey, make a shot, will you, Vinny? Yeah, okay. Let's see now. I think I will try that combo. Vinny. What? Where'd you get that ring? Huh? The ring you're wearing. Where'd you get it? Hey, his sister bought it for him. Yeah, for, for my birthday. May I see it? What for? Well, I, I hate to say this, but it looks like a ring that was stolen from a doctor last night. Hey, you're crazy. I have a list here with a description of that ring, and I... Now, could... look, Mr. Crawford. Yeah, I'll handle you got this, no... Vinny. You got any questions, Crawford? Ask him from me. Very well. Where'd you get that watch you're wearing? Huh? If I'm not mistaken, that's one of the stolen articles. Uh, this is my old man's watch. He lets me wear it. Sorry, but I don't believe either one of you. Now, look, I'm I... afraid I'm going to have to report you both to the police. Rico, what do we do? I'll show you. Oh. Rico, you shouldn't have done that. Well, he was going to the cops. What do we do now? Well, as long as he's out, let's roll him. <laughs> Turn in just a moment to tonight's file which shows how your FBI provides national security. Mr. Wilson, I believe you have a question. Yes, Mr. Keating. My wife is 35 years old. We've got three kids. Two, eight, and 11 years old. If I die, does she get Social Security benefits for the rest of her life? No. They stop after the youngest child reaches the age of 18 and are not resumed until your wife is 65 years old. As a matter of fact, if you want to get a clear picture of Social Security, why not get in touch with your Equitable Society representative? Full information is the first step in the Equitable Society's three-step service on Social Security. The second step is an immediate checkup on your position under Social Security. What's that for? To make sure all the money you've paid in is properly credited to your account. Your Equitable Society representative will supply you with the special form approved by the Social Security Administration and we'll show you what to do with it. This checkup makes possible the last step in this service offered by the Equitable Life Assurance Society. What is that? After you've found out where you stand in Social Security, your Equitable Society representative will be able to show you how a comparatively modest investment in life insurance will build Social Security into full security. In other words, he'll give you an analysis to show how life insurance and Social Security working as a team can give you and your family a future of financial independence, of complete freedom from money worries. There's no charge for this service, 
No obligation whatsoever. See your Equitable Society representative immediately. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Runaway Racketeers. Tonight's case illustrates how a young boy who travels in bad company can become involved in a life of crime. It also shows that the commission of any later crime after the first one has been committed is almost a natural reflex. That is the reason why juvenile delinquency in any section is everyone's concern. Because from the youngsters who go wrong today will come the super criminals, the Dillingers, the Capones, the Carpuses of tomorrow. But that need not be their destiny. There are ways of fighting delinquency, and those ways are successful. They do take money, and they take people. But when a community proves that it is willing to provide boys' clubs and other clean places where youngsters can spend some hours of decent enjoyment, it has made headway. It takes two things. First, the financial ability to provide those places with equipment they need. Second, and more important... It takes long hours of hard work by people who must prove to the children that they understand their problems and are willing to help them solve those problems. That is the main ingredient in any recipe for fighting juvenile delinquency. That single, inexpensive quality, understanding. Tonight's file continues shortly after the attack on Paul Crawford. Rico and Vinny are walking along a neighborhood street. Rick, I still say you shouldn't have done that. Hey, will you stop? We'll get in trouble on account of that. How are we going to get in trouble? Well, Mr. Crawford knows where we live. Yeah, so what? Well, he'll have us arrested. He's got to find us first, don't he? Well, that's easy. All he does is go to my house and to your place. We ain't going to be there. Why not? Where are we going to be? I don't know yet, but we're blowing. Where are we going to go? I told you, I don't know yet. I don't want to run away, Rick. You want to wait for the cops? No, but... All right, then you better come along with me. But you don't know where you're going. We go to the bus station and we grab the first bus out. Special Agent Taylor speaking. Hello, Jim, this is Paul. Paul who? Paul Crawford. Oh, it doesn't sound like you, Paul. It doesn't feel like me either. I just came to. What do you mean? I found those kids for you, Jim, but they knocked me out. When did that happen? About an hour ago. Who are they? One of them is a kid named Rico Anderson. The other is Vinnie Franklin. How did you know they were the kids we were looking for? Franklin has the ring with the big letter F on it. The other one was wearing Dr. Fulton's wristwatch. Mm-hmm. You know where they live, Paul? Yes, Anderson boy lives at 58 West Adams Street. Oh, hold it, Paul. I'm going to write that down. All right. 58 West Adams. Okay, go ahead. And the other one lives at 118 West Jefferson. 118 West Jefferson. That's uh, Vinnie Franklin's address? Right. Got it. What did the doctor say about you, Paul? Oh, I haven't been to see a doctor, Jim. Got to this phone booth as soon as I came to. Well, you'd better get over to a doctor's office as soon as you can. I'll go to these two addresses and see if I can pick up the two youngsters. When I'm finished, I'll check with you down at the boys' club. Can I come in, Paul? Oh, yes, Jim. Well, what would the doctor say? I just have a new bump on my head, that's all. Oh, have you been to see those kids? Yes, I went by before I came down here. Neither one of them were home for dinner. Well, if they ran away, they can't get too far. I only had about a dollar and a half on them. Oh, I got pictures of each of them. Yeah. Take a look at these, will you, Paul? Mm, sure. Which ones are the good likenesses? I don't know. This one's a uh, pretty good of Rico, Jim. Mm. I'd say, uh, yes. This is the best picture you've got of Vinny. That's well, thanks. What are you going to do with them? Well, my hunch is they left town. I see. And if they did, maybe whoever sold them their tickets will remember where they went. 
I'm going to make the rounds of all the transportation terminals and show everybody these pictures. Mind if I come along? No, if you feel well enough, come on. Rico. Eh, what? When does this bus get to Boston? Eh, about another hour. Do you know anything about Boston? Sure. What? Well, uh, they finished third last year. Huh? Third in the American League. Oh. What I meant was, do you know your way around? Have you ever been there before? No, but we'll make out. I still wish this bus was going the other way. Ah, what's the matter with you? This is big action. Not for me. What? As soon as we get off the bus, we'll head right for a hotel. You ever been in one? Just the downstairs part. Yeah, you ain't seen nothing. In the rooms, they got soft beds, stuff like that. Uh-huh. And when you get hungry, if you like, you can have your meals right in your room. That's... Sound like something to you, huh? Yeah, sleeping and eating. And I like it better at home. Now, you ain't going home till we make a few scores. There's plenty of doctors in Boston. When we clip them, then we go home. Not before. <laughs> Any luck here, Jim? Yes, Paul. Oh, where'd they go? They were sold two tickets on a bus for Boston. Ticket agent just gave you that? Yeah, the boys walked in and Rico asked him for two tickets on the first bus that was going out. Hmm. I'm surprised he didn't call the police seeing two kids act like that. Oh, I checked that. He said the bus company was sued last year for aiding in a false arrest. Since then, he's been instructed not to do anything but sell tickets. Jim, is there any chance of stopping that bus before it gets to Boston? No, it arrived there a couple of hours ago. That's too bad. What are you going to do now? Call the Boston office and have them send out an alarm on the boys. I see. I've got to go up there tomorrow on another case. While I'm there, I'll see what I can do. Boston's a big city, Jim. Yeah, yeah, I know, Paul. But if they're still there, I've got an idea on how I might find them. Rico. Yeah, what is it? I don't feel so good. What's the matter? I wish I was home. Oh, quit beefing, will you? Well, what time did the doctor say he'd be? As soon as he could. I told him to hurry. Yeah. Rico. What? Take it easy when you slug him, will you? Why? Well, you can kill a guy hitting him over the head. Yeah, not this way. Well, I don't want to get mixed up in nothing where a guy gets killed. Will you shut up? But, Rico, I... I quiet. Wait till I get behind the door before you open it. Okay. I'm coming. Dr. Chancimino? No, I'm not Dr. Chancimino, Vinny. Huh? How do you know my name? Because I've been looking for you. For your friend, too. Come on out from behind the door, Rico. Okay, then I'll close it. Hey, what's the idea? Who are you? I'm a special agent of the FBI. Huh? How did you know he was here? You were traced to Boston. I had a hunch you'd try the same thing here, so I had every doctor alerted. Told him to call our office if he got a phone call late at night from someone who wasn't a regular patient. You're real smart, ain't you? No, Rico. But I am smart enough to know that you two are headed in the wrong direction. Now you're going to come back home with me. Rico Anderson was sentenced to a reformatory to remain there until he is 21 years old. Because his companion, Vinnie Franklin, was greatly influenced in participating in the crime, he was paroled in the custody of his parents. And now we switch to Washington, D.C., in order that you may hear a vital message from Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Mr. Hoover. Good citizens develop. So do criminals. Each is the product of training, opportunity, and surroundings. Both have one thing in common. Their early years foretell their future. Youth is a time to prepare for the full life in the future. Study, work, and recreation with the aid of a good home which earnestly seeks spiritual as well as mental and physical development of its children leads to good citizenship. These are the forces that create a feeling of personal responsibility and equip youth to face the future 
with competence and courage. This nation's responsibility to its youth is increasing. It must, because of the facts that are stark and revealing. The crime problem in this nation almost exceeds imagination, as 190 major offenses occur somewhere in our country every hour, day and night. Its toll in monetary terms, if diverted, could retire our national debt in less than a generation. Add to that another great menace, the failure of citizenship. And we have a major domestic problem. The call of citizenship today has never before been so clear. Criminals who would rob us of our lives and property and godless communists who would rob us of liberty and freedom by their deception present a challenge that calls for action. I know of no better way to prepare for the future of America than to provide now for the future of our youth. The Boys Clubs of America have accepted this challenge. 300 boys clubs throughout the nation are providing wholesome recreation and constructive activities for boys who are learning and practicing self-reliance, tolerance, and fair play. America needs young people like these. It needs youthful viewpoints and youthful hopes. It needs boys who will bring vitality to the homes, the schools, the churches, and in short, to every arena of human endeavor. It needs future citizens who believe in God and who recognize the need for moral stability. It wants clean, healthy boys who are ready at all times to fight, if need be, for American principles. These ideals are the foundation of the spirit of the Boys Clubs of America. If this splendid organization is to expand and continue to help build the citizens of tomorrow, it merits the wholehearted support of serious-minded Americans today. Thank you, Mr. Hoover. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Now, a quick review of the special three-point service offered by your Equitable Society representative to help you get the most out of Social Security. First, it gives you a clear picture of what Social Security can accomplish for you. Second, your Equitable Society representative supplies you with a special form approved by the Social Security Administration for checking up on your position under Social Security. Third, he shows you how easy and inexpensive it is to build Social Security into full security. Don't fail to take advantage of the special service offered without charge by your Equitable Representative and the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, a factual account of the manipulations of a hardened hijacker. Its subject, theft from interstate shipment. Its title, The Easy Marksman. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Easy Marksman on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.